Hello folks and welcome. So Linux Mint 21.3 Cinnamon. Today's video is going to be about some of those action items that interfaces with your file manager. I'll talk about a shortcut to um, print your documents by just right clicking in your file manager instead of opening up the document. I'll talk about some shortcuts that you can put on your desktop by right clicking such as system settings, take a screenshot, or even restarting Cinnamon. You know, there's lots of bells and whistles, and they've added some extra ones since my last video, and I'll make mention of those as I move forward. So this uh, is for any person that uses Linux Mint Cinnamon, and uh, more importantly, I will talk about some basics toward the end of the video, if you are wanting to know that from scratch. Some of my older tips, in other words. Uh, that would mean if you're not a subscriber and never seen any of my different shortcuts. I will say welcome folks filming in 1920 by 1080. You can adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary. You are watching this on Linux for Seniors. Linux is for any age, but the name of the channel is Linux for Seniors. If you don't see that icon above the time date throughout the whole video, then go find me on YouTube, Linux for Seniors. I just had a message just in the last two weeks that someone watched a couple of my videos and didn't see that subscription logo. I had to inform that person you were watching my video on someone else's channel because they all should have that logo. Anyways, moving along, I have a new feature that I added, which is right clicking and opening up system settings. I'm going to talk about some action items. There are some new ones that's been added since my last video. I talked about this previously calculate SHA 512s, which I had you do that on a terminal with a very simple command. And I even got a message back on why did you use that instead of this? Well, I was trying to do it for simplicity reasons. But now you've got something you can click on. They have the calculate and also verify SHA 512. So somebody was listening. And that's a good thing for everyone. So I'm going to mention some of that a little bit later though. Um, restarting Cinnamon, send to printer, and take a screenshot is what I'm going to start with. So one more time folks, welcome. Filming in 1920 by 1080. So basically you can uh, still go to system settings this way and right click system settings this way. All right. So right clicking system settings. So that's the first item. Item number two is I'm going to talk about Take Screenshot. Now that tool has um, been revamped. You still have the old screenshot tool, SC, this one. All right, and it, it does have a selection area that looks similar to the new tool, but it's not. Okay, you'll find that out if you use this tool. So I uh, might as well make mention of the file manager now and who we are dealing with today as a name of a person. Well, I chose Paul for today's name. It's just a made up name. So Paul has some pictures. There's no other subfolders in here, but the new tool is going to create a screenshot folder for you automatically. You don't have to do anything other than to grab the screenshot. So right click, take the screenshot. Now it's asking you to draw a box around something on your screen. So I will just focus in on this little area and then I'm going to close that box. And you're probably wondering, well, why didn't you save it? Because it auto saved when I closed it. I'll open up uh, a web browser and let's do this with an overlapping so I can have a screenshot of both these windows in a uh, whatever you call it uh, smaller fashion. Right click take screenshot. I'm just going to draw a box but I'm encompassing two windows. Now I'll point to the hamburger menu and let you see the tool. It's called Pix. It does have some extra bells and whistles but I'm just going to use the basics. Close. And you're probably going, well, the guy didn't save anything. Well, I don't need to. It's already done for me. It's right in here. I'll make those bigger. So that was the last screenshot. And as you can see, going full screen, um, it has two windows encompassing whatever I drew around it. Okay, so this other one, you, you saw me make the first one. All right, so that's the take screenshot tool in a nutshell. So let's go back to action items. So everything with a check mark is active. Now you'll notice that this one is not currently. So to make it active, I need to click on it and hit plus. 
you get these things from in here if they are not the type that are already there. The ones with the lock symbols should already be here. And be careful what you turn off because this stuff affects your system. So basically a lot of these, if not all, can be turned off in your file manager also. Not installed, turned off and on. But you can do it in the managed area. So it downloads areas where you find these. To, to uh, add like the screenshot tool, you find that button right here. You click it, puts a check mark, throws it in here, and it will uh, basically, where is that thing? Right here. It'll look just like that. And you'll right click and you won't see it until you actually activate it. So right now you don't have a take screenshot. Now you do. All right. So far, so clear. All right. So we have also another tool. Restart Cinnamon. Now, why would you need to restart Cinnamon anyways? Well, I'm going to go to settings for a second and point to general. In here, this is on by default. Restart Cinnamon when it uses too much memory. You can actually turn that off if you have large amounts of memory. All right, but you can also leave it. A lot of times people restart Cinnamon because they don't see the bubble above the icon. You see that Firefox bubble that popped up and that says files and terminal in blue? Okay, if those are not appearing, restart your sentiment and without logging in and out of your machine or rebooting. So to give you the example of that, I'm going to click that and your screen will just go black for a second. I'm not going to edit this video. I don't need to. I can still keep talking. Nothing happened. It's still filming. It just restarted sentiment. Okay, another way, right click on your panel bar. This has always been here for the last couple of uh, versions. Troubleshoot, restart cinnamon. Now when I click that, there's gonna be a box in the center of my screen. It'll say restarting cinnamon and my mouse pointer will jump toward that word. Just pay close attention. It'll be really fast. The third option is Alt and F2. You don't have to remember all these. Small R and enter. The last one is Control, Alt, and Escape does the same thing. So I just showed you several ways to restart sentiment, but more importantly, you now have an option in your menu if you install that action item. Or you can still use it the old-fashioned way, troubleshoot, restart. Or Alt and F2, if it's a laptop, maybe Function Alt F2. Or you can put in Control, Alt, and Escape. All right, so that covers this. Now, before I, <clears throat> I'm going to minimize this or close it, <clears throat> and I'm going to talk about keyboard shortcuts for a second. Hit Control and F1. There are three pages worth of keyboard shortcuts in here. You can also manually assign them if, if you're opening up settings. And I've shown videos on this before in this area here. I have dedicated videos for this. A lot of people assign different keys to stuff, but I'm talking about the general. Very common ones are Control C and V, the copy and paste ones. They also work in Microsoft Windows. Another one would be Control H. All right, so I'm going to open up the file manager, and this is Nemo 6.0.2. So Paul, again, is our user for today. So he has standard folders, but Control H also shows hidden. Maybe you've seen some of my videos installing manual mouse cursors or pointers in this folder and icon sets and possibly themes. When you uh, actually click on this icon, your file manager will have to have this one and this one already made. If it's not there, when you click that themes icon, it generates these with nothing in them. I'm going to say this again. When you click your themes, it verifies that these are here. If they're not, it creates them. These are hidden folders, dot icons, period icons, dot themes, period themes. There's currently nothing in there. I've shown lots of videos on how to add things in there. But I just wanted to make sure you understood that. That when you click on themes for the first time, it generates those if they're missing. If you keep clicking that, it doesn't regenerate them. Once they're already here in your system, it, it doesn't create more of them. It just, it's a one-time thing. But more importantly, 
when you do click themes, it looks for these two and generates them automatically. And when you're in here and you do the uh, add and remove, and as you can see, it's the first time I use it. It's 89 of these themes. When you add these themes, they'll be added. So let's put it this way. Now you see that theme right in here. That's where that's stored in your file manager. All right. So I'm going to go back to my home folder. So there's your hidden files and folders. Control H. If you right click on the screen, it just says show hidden. If you walk over to the menu, you can see Control H. All right. I'm going to open up documents for a second and uh, talk about the new feature for printing. It doesn't matter if it's a text document or a PDF or some other document. It's a document. So in the past, we used to double click and open these and do file and print. Shortcut, of course, is control P. And it gives me a dialog box providing my printers online and ready to go and I can print. We now have a new feature where you can right click and do print file. It does not open up a dialog box. It sends that document directly to your printer. There is one caveat though. Right click, system settings, hardware, printers. Let's talk about your printer. Hopefully you've set up one because if you are trying to use that feature, you need to have a default printer. I don't mean just having an auto discover printer. You need to also make sure that it's set for default. This is very important. Otherwise this feature will not work. Set it as default. Okay. In my case, I wrote green check mark based on the theme that I'm using. So that means that's ready to go. It's got paper in it. It's ready to go. And now I can literally print from it. Right click print. And all you really see is uh, you'll see a post-it note pop up notification that says it sent your document to the printer. And if you have one of these icons on your panel bar, you may see some action down there too, but it's not opening up a dialog box and that's the new print feature from action items. That one right there. Okay. So I'm going to move over to here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but ISOs, I mentioned that on my previous video, how to check your ISOs by calculating the MD5 SHA. And then I had you do the SHA 512 through terminal because this tool was not available at the time of my filming. They are now. You can still use terminal and different commands. So I had someone ask me, why did I use a certain command verifying SHA 512s? It's just for simplicity as I wrote back to the person. There are many options when you use terminal commands. But now you can just click calculate MD5, SHA 256 and 512s and also verify same. Then you have the same button. Now you notice this dialog box is a little different here that if I were to go to documents, yeah, you still have some of the stuff, but the verify button is missing. So these menus are very intuitive based on the, on what you're clicking on. Also make a bootable disc is available here versus it's not in here. Okay. So far so good, hopefully. So in this case, if I was making a bootable and I have a USB stick, just be careful with this one. Do you have some data on there? Because sometimes it just destroys it. So if you do that and write, it just wipes this out. So in either case, that's how I can quickly do that without opening up the tool. Now, speaking of the USB tools, they're both in here. Just type in USB and you'll find the image writer and the stick formatter. Now the stick formatter just went un undergone a change if you're not aware of this yet. So let me click that. Normally you would point to this and it'll tell you what FAT32 capabilities are and also the rest of these. And a lot of people make the mistake of clicking on this to try to figure out what's wrong with it. Listen to my mouse. Nothing's happening. So I'm going to move my mouse out of the way and just leave it pointed at it. Your dialog box may be a different color if you're using a dark theme. But more importantly, it explains the FAT32 and all the way down to extension 4. So yeah, just leave your mouse pointer on there. Not a big deal though. All right. So we have lots of little features that are done with plugins. 
or preferences, it doesn't matter which one I use to get into this area. I still get the same box, File Management Preferences. Here's Plugins, Edit, Preferences, File Management Preferences, here's Plugins. So it doesn't matter how you get in here. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that I've added through Action Items. Right click, System Settings. Pull that to the side for a second. You see all these check marks. That means they're active in your system because your file manager is in control of your system. A lot of things are well activated and deactivated through here or here. So if I disable all, I would not recommend this. You will see all these check marks removed. They're gone. And enable all of them. Came, they came back on. And then I'll just find verify this one. And I'll just turn that one off. And you can see it's off here. Now I'm going to turn it on over here. And you'll see this check mark go on. So there's a, a direct relationship is what I'm getting at. And I don't, rem uh, I don't recommend uh, disabling your extensions either. All right. So those are in a nutshell. Now for you folks that are brand new, I'll give you some tips. So um, to resize the boxes, double click, pull down, click and hold, push up and double click. That's one way of doing that. It simulates this button right here. It's wherever you left that resizer. You can grab the corners, you can right click and resize. Some people don't feel comfortable using that one, so just grab a corner and pull it. Or up and down. Resizing the icons can be done this way. And also click zoom in and out and control plus, minus, and zero. If you repeatedly hit the plus key while holding the control key, it will just keep zooming. And it will be the opposite if you hold down the control key and use the minus. And then uh, the normal is control zero. Now I'm going to take all three at the same time, holding down my control key while scrolling on my computer mouse. I have a standard wireless computer mouse that I'm doing this with. Okay. For pictures, if you were just to get a quick thumbnail, hit the space bar. Space bar. All right, right click, set as wallpaper. Okay, space bar to open, space bar to close. You'll notice there's only one close button. If you double click, this tool is opened up in X Viewer. You can hold down your Alt key, your Alt key, while scrolling back and forth from 2% to 2000 in this case. There's some extra toys in here too, like play as a slideshow if you get tons of images. Okay. With documents, I'll take the PDF. Uh, I showed you how to print from it. We can certainly still use the old print also, but uh, resizing the actual innards is done the same way, holding down your control key while scrolling. Again, I can double click to make this full screen to make this very large. And then I let go of the control key and I can scroll normally. Okay. And then I'll pull that back down and close. So there's lots of options when you do this. So you have this little closed button. It just gets rid of that sidebar. And then this over here, this is an F9. You can also do two windows by bouncing it off the wall and do a control Nancy, control N. Grab the other box and bounce it off the center. It has to be like right in here. Bam. And what is this good for? Drag and drop files between the two. I will, uh, all I'm doing is pulling it down because it goes back to the resized. I can also use uh, what they call extra pane F3. F3 it is. Now that makes a split window. And on this side, you can click like USB stick or thumb drive or USB hard drive. And this will be your regular files and you can drag and drop. This medium is also movable. The icons are independently resized. I'll make those dinky and these ones jumbo. Okay. You just need to click in the pin you're working with. And if you want the thing to be perfectly in the center, you adjust it to whatever you want. F3. 
some basic things with your file manager. Thank you for watching.